I mean, the best part about painting for me right now, especially, is like, you know, not, I guess, I, I was just listening to Paul McCartney talk, and I loved when de Kooning told him, give him some advice, because of course Paul McCartney himself is a great painter, um, but not everything has to be so significant, you know, you can just make something and make something, not really put any thought about like, ooh, exact precision and, and that kind of thing. See, even Jimmy Stewart, like if you look at him, I really just tried to embody his like tall demeanor, his tall demeanor and this like, just kind of, uh, I don't know, he, I can't explain, but he is just like an everyday guy. Like I, I just, it's, it's so enticing to me. I, I like that a lot about him. Okay, so, so far, we've really attacked Jimmy Stewart's background and it's almost the hotel. What I'm trying to create is he's opening the door to the scene of the gray, the green neon signs in the hotel room when Kim and, when Kim and James, not James, when Kim and Jimmy, yeah, I know James personally, when Jimmy and Kim meet for one of those just iconic moments in the movie, it's a very dramatic scene, and Jimmy's tracking her, and he's, he's being this private detective, but there's something, there's something going on. There's something going on. So, he's opening the door. Uh, Hitchcock's finest with suspense. There's music playing. Bernard Henman, or Herman, whatever his name is. I, I should play it, but I'll get copyrighted. Um, but then he sees her. He sees this, this necklace, and he's supposed to be tracking her, but of course he falls in love with her. And it's just this very iconic moment. I'm not gonna spoil much more. I need to change the color of the door. But first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of attack with like a grayish, um, gray vibe. Because we're gonna like, really just kind of try to establish this like, this flooring here. I like to use a lot of oil paint. Um, shout out to Sagatuck legend James Brandis, a uh, big influence of mine. He uses like a lot of oil paint and I think it's always so cool. He just, his, his, um, his like, where you, like his proportions are out of this world. Cause he, he can just like be like, oh, you assume, you assume this. And it's always to the T accurate, like, very cool. I think for me, my goal always is creating like an energy for the painting. Um, Vertigo, the movie, very much has you wanting more and, and being like, what is Alfred Hitchcock thinking about? He's, he's, summoning, he's summoning his darkest, most like, his darkest, you know, deepest secrets, and he's putting it into a movie, he's channeling it through that. So, do I want it to be eerie? The answer is yes, I do want it to be eerie. Um, it's not as scary as Psycho, of course, but it's getting there. This is a really good color green, I think. Um, I love this. But like, like be, that being said, um, my paintings are for sale. It's more just like, I would prefer pickup only because I just had a sad tragedy happen with one of my old paintings where I shipped it off to my uncles. Shout out Uncle Ben, Uncle Jeff, which two are some of my favorite people in this world. Um, and it just got tattered, so I had to give them Mary Poppins, which I think a lot of people liked my Wizard of Oz painting but I like the Mary Poppins painting better, but that's because I prefer that movie. So I think Wizard of Oz is a classic. I mean, it's a certifiable classic. I'm musically trained classically, and I think that has a lot to do with why I like musicals because it's not as much like the showmanship and stuff as much as it is like the musicality of it. So for example, 
La La Land has so much great like piano in it that like it really kind of paces out the movie well. Same with Singing in the Rain. Um, Singing in the Rain is very just core classic and also time and place because that was at a time where I could never understand. It's like a time capsule because you got silent movies, silent movies coming out and then all these talkies are coming in and everyone's like, these are a scam. They're going to fade away and, and <laughs> all these talkies, they're so stupid. People talking, no one wants to see people talking in movies. Let's just keep it with the silent stuff. It's working better. Um, and oh, were they wrong? They were absolutely wrong. You're, you're, you're not, you're not like this other girl that I met that looks just like Kim Novak. You're actually Kim Novak. Whoa. And I'm telling you, when you first see that movie, you're like, out drops. Oh, I, 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 this is so obvious to me what color I'm about to do. Um, you know, I never thought of it as one of my favorite colors in the world, but I really do think that red has got to be a great color. It's got to be one of the greatest ever. Greatest ever. I could ASMR art for you guys, and I'd be very good at it because I have a nice, smoothy, relaxing voice. So, movie review. Doom 2, what an excellent film. I think it was a little slow. That's my only gripe with it was it was a little slow in the middle acts, but I think it's very hard, especially if you know the context of the books, There's not a lot of action. So when you take from the source material and you make it better, it's pretty crazy. And um, I thought that was such a good cinematic experience. I went with two of my friends and we ate popcorn very quickly and ran out and it was very disappointing because I got some and I didn't want to get up to get refills because the movie was so good. So I missed a tad bit at the beginning, but I thought um, Chalamet was great. Um, I thought Villanueva is probably, he's probably one of the greatest directors of our gener of my generation at least. Like, Every movie he's come out with so far is incredible. So yeah, I, I think that movie is like the sci-fi experience. Like it's our empire strikes back. Like it really is something to be proud of. I want to go back and see it again, but I got to see the first movie and then second movie and combine them. And I think that would be awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pitch my musical idea right now. And I'm gonna tell you, I've written a few songs for this musical. It's something I started when I was in college. And it's been a very secret project of mine. I'm very vocal about what I do creatively. But this is the first time I'm revealing this. And it's, um, it's called Morton, uh, Morton, Mor Morehouse. Morton Morehouse and the Magical School of Mortuary Science. It's a musical, and I've written a few songs for it. And it's, it's about a boy named Morton who is gonna follow his dreams to be a mortuary science um, major, which leads to, you know, dealing with dead bodies. And there's gonna be a lot of like, it's kind of like if like Hogwarts meets like dead bodies. I'm actually really gonna, I'm sorry guys, I'm really gonna leave you in a cliffhanger. And it's only because I gotta finish this painting on my own. Um, you know, as, as I'm making these videos, I'm really enjoying making these videos. And I really, you know, I'm happy you get to see a glimpse into my psyche and what makes me tick. But, and I say a lot of butts on this channel. And that's because I like butts. <laughs> but, until next time, follow me on TikTok now, Instagram, YouTube, all these, all these apps, all these social media devices. But what I will tell you is I will never, I will never fade away from my artist's authenticity. And that is why you should like, subscribe, share with your friends, please. I'm trying to I'm trying to reach a, a vast audience here, trying to inspire other people that are self-taught like me. 
This is so important. I mean, art is so important to our livelihood. It's it's everything. It, it makes it makes the world go round. It's what we're influenced by. You wouldn't trade your stuff for other people's stuff. It's the same reason I wouldn't trade my love for art for anything else's, anyone else's passion for anything else. So, I'll leave you with one thing. You are what you love. You aren't what loves you.